In exercise 5 you'll learn how to prepare a bacterial smear and to stain it with a simple stain. The simple stain is a simple stain because it's a simple procedure and only a single dye is used. You'll be spreading a culture in a thin film over the slide. You may or may not add a drop of water. You're going to air dry it completely. You will heat fix the slide by passing it through a flame. You'll flood the slide with stain, rinse it with water, dry it, and observe it. In this lab, all of the specimens that you create, uh, that you prepare, you will be observing with the 100x lens, the oil immersion lens. Most cells, including microorganisms, have a chemical charge. Most are positively charged. Stains are salts that dissociate into ions. The colored ion, or chromophore, can be positively charged, we call that a cationic chromophore, or negatively charged, we call that an anionic chromophore. Chromophores are thus attracted to or repelled by a cell. In order to stain bacteria, we first have to get them on a slide. A specimen must be applied to a slide and allowed to dry before proceeding with staining. For specimens that are in liquid suspension, you'll apply the liquid to the slide using a loop. For specimens on auger or solid medium, a drop of water, sometimes saline is used, should be put on the slide first. You want a very small drop of water because it takes too long to dry if you use a large drop. An inoculating needle can then be used to acquire the specimen and disperse it in the drop of water. It's helpful to mark the slide with a wax pencil. You can either draw circles or draw lines. Make markings to help you to remember what specimens are on the slide. The type of wax pencil must not be marked hydro. A hydro wax pencil actually washes off in water, and we don't want that. And we also don't use a Sharpie. The Sharpie marker can be used after the stain is complete to remark if the wax is not legible. Uh, but the reason we don't use a Sharpie is that some stains will contain alcohol or certain stains use an alcohol rinse and Sharpie will wash off the slide in the presence of alcohol. Do not hold the slide in the flame to speed drying time. If you do this, this is going to alter the shape of the microorganism. Heat fixing must then be done next. Heat fixing is necessary to prevent the specimen from washing away during the staining process. Here you hold the slide with a clothespin and pass it through the flame quickly three times. This process coagulates proteins in the cells and makes them stick to the slide like an egg would stick to a frying pan. Simple stains typically involved just a single dye. Basic stains will have a positively charged or cationic chromophore and are attracted to the negative charge of a cell membrane or cell wall. Some of the basic stains are methylene blue, which will stain the organisms a blue color, crystal violet, which will stain organisms a purple color, and safranin which will stain or organisms a pinkish red color. Acidic stains have an anionic chromophore. Therefore, they have a negative charge and they will be repelled by the negative charge of a cell membrane or a cell wall. Three acidic stains are nigrosin, India ink, and magic marker. And you'll notice that they are left on the slide so that they create a dark background. The organism repelling that dark color is going to shine through, sort of like the moon in the nighttime sky. The organism will be colorless and the background is going to be colored. What to expect in this lab will be Micrococcus luteus, a tetracoccus organism or arrangement. This will stain blue because we're using methylene blue, Crinibacterium xerosis, you'll see as bacilli in palisades. It's sort of like a picket fence arrangement. We'll be staining Streptococcus species, perhaps Streptococcus salivarius or Streptococcus mitis, which are organisms typically found in the mouth. 
These are streptococci and will be stained as blue chains. And finally, we'll be staining an organism that's found in the oral cavity known as Neisseria sicca. This one is in diplococci, so it is two coccus organisms, sort of like two jelly beans or coffee beans side by side. We'll also be doing an acidic stain of tooth plaque. Now you'll note that the background is going to be black. You'll be using a magic marker to do this, and you may see different arrangements in morphologies. For example, you may see streptobacilli, which are bacilli in chains. You might see spiral-shaped organisms, the spirilla. You may see streptococci, cocci in chains. Down on the bottom left, you're seeing fungal filaments. That's not uncommon in the oral cavity. You may also see yeast in the oral cavity, and I'm certain you will see epithelial cells. Epithelial cells, of course, are your cheek cells or uh, cells from your gums. And if you look closely here, uh, this is a, a great deal magnified, but if you look at this closely, you can see that white portion in the center. That's the nucleus of the epithelial cell, and there are bacteria on the surface of the epithelial cell, which will be visible at 1000x magnification. You'll also be performing Anthony's capsule stain. Now, Anthony's capsule stain is actually considered to be a negative stain. It doesn't use a black dye in the background, but it uses copper sulfate. Copper sulfate is going to remain on the slide and it will color the background a purplish color. The capsules are going to be visible as clear areas. Capsules have no charge, neither negatively or positively charged, so they are neither going to repel or accept the dye, so you're going to see a clear area surrounding the uh, bacterial cell. The Klebsiella coccobacillus, the organism that we're staining in this procedure, will be first stained with the basic dye crystal violet. Crystal violet is going to diffuse through the capsule and is going to attach to the negative charges of the Klebsiella organism and color it a purple color. We'll then proceed with the copper sulfate. The copper sulfate uh, is going to then stain the background of the slide and we will see these clear capsules then surrounding the bacteria. Remember, capsules enhance virulence of a microorganism. Capsules are slippery, so white blood cells can't glom onto them, and white blood cells can't efficiently engulf the bacteria, and therefore these organisms have higher virulence. We find capsules in Klebsiella pneumoniae, and we find capsules in Streptococcus pneumoniae. See you in lab.